Good day Matrix, today we're having a look at the Gauteng Province prelim paper for 2021. The scenario is about air travel, that it's a form of travel in airplanes, jets, helicopters, blah blah blah. The use of air travel has greatly increased in recent decades. Question 1. Word processing. A document was created to give interesting facts about airports. Open the one word one world word processing document and insert your name and surname in the footer. Right, this instruction is very important. You'll see in the finals they ask this they ask you to do this um, with your exam number. Now the reason this is important is that the naming of your folder also provides your exam number but if anything goes wrong this is basically the only identifying information they have proving that this is your work so it's extremely important that you actually do this that you actually do this and in some questions like in access this can actually count a mark so please put in your actual exam number in your finals and pay attention to actually f follow this instruction 1.1 Add the author, Brent Paskus, to the properties of the document. File. And over here, here you'll see an author. Now, sometimes it's easy to add an author here, but especially if there's already an author, it's quite difficult. So I prefer doing it here by advanced properties, then it's really easy. Then you can just change it here. And then it's very straightforward. 1.2. Modify the cover page as follows. Change the font size of the heading, these are the 15 coolest things at airports around the world, to 48 points. Vertically align the heading to the center of the cover page. Right. Now the 48 points most people got right. So 48 is actually one of the options in here, so that's quite easy. But the vertical alignment is the thing most people struggle with. And I can't believe you still struggle with it because it's been asked in so, so, so many papers. All right, so vertical alignment means on this page, it's vertically in the center of the page. So we can do that. Firstly, just check with your show and hide that there's actually a section break. Otherwise, it will be applied to the whole um, document. So there is a section break, we don't need to change that. And then you can just stand on the page, anywhere on the page, and then go to Layout, Page Setup, you'll launch this dialog launcher over here. Layout, Vertical Alignment, Center. Okay, this has been asked a million times. Make sure you get this right. See, now it's vertically in the center of the page. 1.3 Modify the heading to style as follows. Expand the character spacing by 1.1 points. Add any glow text effect to the style and rename, rename the style to airports. Okay, editing the style doesn't mean you go actually to find the style and then edit it on the page. You have to do it right directly on the styles panel at the top here. So you can actually stand anywhere, it doesn't matter. You just right click on the style and you choose modify. And now we have to go do everything they've asked. The first thing is to expand the character spacing. Now that's one that most people struggle with quite a bit. It's something that you normally find here in the font dialog launcher. So we'll also find it here in the font tab or the font option, and it's under advanced. And this is where we can change spacing, expanded by 1.1, okay? The next thing we had to do is apply a glow effect. So effects, there's text effects at the bottom, and it's on this side, glow, and any glow effect, just choose one of the presets. Don't just change the size or transparency, just choose a preset, there we go then it's easily visible as well. And then the last thing was rename it to airports. So then we just change the name at the top here to airports. There you go. So you see the name at the top here is now airports, but the heading to part, if you hover over it, is still there. So now we know it's done correctly. 1.4. Insert page numbers anywhere in the header as follows. 
start the page numbering on the second page with one. I'm going to do this in two sections and then I'll show you why. So this is the first page, second page, edit header. We have to do it in the header, anywhere in the header, so they don't say left, middle or right. So these page numbers, top of page, I'm just going to put it on the left hand side. And they tell us we need to start this at one. So then we go back here, format page numbers, and we choose start at one. Okay. Right, now it's jumped. Don't worry. Let's just read the next instruction. The next instruction says, display only even page numbers. Okay, now let's see what's happened automatically. So the odd page now has nothing. The even page has the number. Odd page has nothing. Even page has the number. So that's actually done for us automatically. You just had to change it to one. That's actually all you had to do. Because they said change it that only the even page numbers display. And the settings were actually set to that already. So that's all you had to do. I know it was a bit of a confusing question because you're like, I had to start it on page two and now there's no number on page two. But unfortunately, if we start the second page on number one, now it's an odd page. So now there won't be any page number displaying. So you just have to follow the instructions exactly as it stands there and then leave it as it comes out. And don't try and further figure out what it's supposed to look like. Just follow the instructions word word for word and you leave it the leave the questions as it is then 1.5 insert an automatic table of contents on the second page below the heading table of contents in the classic style show only two levels now there's a few things i want to point out here so firstly, put your show and hide on so that you don't ever auto by accident put it in after the page break because then you won't get your marks. You have to put it in before this. Okay. Now, if they say insert an automatic table of contents, they're not referring to one of these automatic tables. That's not what they're referring to. If you use the button on the, the ribbon, then it is an automatic table of contents. Then it is not one that you typed by hand. That's what they're talking about. Okay, so basically use the table of contents feature. That's actually what they mean. Okay, so we go to custom table of contents. I don't think I've ever seen a question in CAT where you don't have to use the custom table of contents where it was enough to just use one of these options. Don't do that. Always go to custom table of contents. Right, they said we need to choose the classic style. So at the bottom here, we can choose general, formats, classic. That's the first thing. And they said only show two levels. There you go. Classic and two levels. 1.6. Find the table below the heading airport attractions and make the following changes. Change the height of the first row to exactly one centimeter. Do that. Okay, airport attractions. This is the first row. Okay, so I'm just going to select that row. Table tools, layout. Pretty much anything you're going to have to do on a table will be in this table tools menu, either on design or on the layout tab. So let's go to design. No, it's not there. Layout. Ha, ah, here's height. So they said one centimeter. There you go. Then, second, apply banded rows to the table style. So, I don't see anything on layout. It must be on design. There's banded rows. There's the table style options you see. It doesn't really matter what you've got selected. Just as long as you're standing anywhere in the table, it will apply it to the table. So, without it, you'll see all the table rows look the same. With it, it has different alternating colors. Okay, now add an automatic caption with a text Spain to the Adolfo Suarez Madrid Bajaras Airport picture, row 9. 
let's go find that. Okay, so it must be this one because this is the only one that doesn't have a figure, uh, a caption. So we just right click on the picture and we say insert caption. So for some reason mine is set to um, a different a numbering system. So I'm just going to change numbering back to one, two, three. I don't think it would have been necessary in your case. And then we just include the word Spain because that's all they said must be there. Hey, just check the question again. They just said add an automatic caption with a text Spain to this airport picture. See, and we can say OK, and that's it. Some of you were nice enough to actually format it the same and I think you maybe saw you didn't have to put the semicolon in but it doesn't they didn't say it has to look the same as the rest so if you had to make it look the same as the rest you can just select one of these use the format painter and then paint it over this one but that wasn't in the question the big thing is do you see if I if I select this it actually um, makes the nine a little bit gray and the eight a little bit gray so that shows me that it's still a field and that's how teachers mark it and that we can actually see that you did it correctly okay add a formula in the last cell of the last row to calculate the average level of interest ensure that no Ensure, sure, that no decimal places display. Okay. So last cell of the last row must be this one. And this is the level of interest. So we need to calculate the average. So again, I'm on table tools, layout. Here's the formula button. You see. Okay. So the default is sum above. And we can check here what the other options are. Do you see average? ABS, false, max, min, there's lots of options. But if I just click on average, it actually adds an extra one. So the best option, in my opinion, is just to replace the sum with average. Now that you've seen what it should be spelled like. And they said ensure that no decimals display. So now we need to change the number format. And no decimals to be displayed will have to be this one, I think. This one or this one. Either way, not the one that has the dot dot. Um, I think this one should work. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. 1.7. Find the numbered list below the heading Things People Lose at Airports. Define and apply a new multi-level list so that it appears as follows. Okay. So they've given us a screenshot of what it should look like. Now this question was actually surprisingly easy, but lots of people struggled with it because they missed small things. Um, the first thing that they missed is that there's no full stop after the second level. You see? And the second thing is a lot of people just did this in a wacky way and then it wasn't a multi-level list anymore. So let me show you how to do this properly. So here's my list. Okay. Step one is just indent everything so that it looks the same as this, so that it's actually a multi-level list. So glasses, belts, up to passport needs to be the second level, hey? So then I can just click on tab or increase indent. No, I clicked too many again. So up to there and then the same over there. Okay, that's the first thing you have to do. And you'll see if I actually click on one, you see it selects two as well. And if I click on A, it selects everything because all of this is together with one multi-level list. Now I need to redefine this as a different type of multi-level list. So I'm going to select all of it. And you'll see here, this is the multi-level list button. Now I prefer choosing one that is close to the one that I'm using. So you'll see this is the closest to the one that I'm using. So I'm going to apply this one and you see there it's almost perfect already. I just need to take away the full stop at the end. So there's two ways of doing this. The one way is to go to define new multi-level list 
and then choosing level two and taking away the full stop. The other way is clicking on the level and right click and choosing adjust list indents and then you can actually take the full stop away there and then it will also take it away for the whole list. So you'll see it's still a full list over there, it's still a full list over there, the whole list works together. If I stand here, this is how we mark, we actually click on one of these, we can go back, we check that it adjusts together. If I click here, I can click forward, it, it works together as one full list. It's not just about how it looks as a final product, it's about whether it can adapt to more items or less items or if an item can change between levels. If it can't, then you did it wrong. Okay, now the one thing that I saw some people did is they did a new multi-level list and they tried to, to do the include level number from and they, this is a very confusing thing and I don't think you should even attempt this by yourself because this is a this is something that people who like do extreme reporting would do. The, in in CAT, it's easy enough to just choose one that is close enough to what you already what you see, and then you just adapt the one that they've given you. Okay, right. So it's not actually that difficult unless you made it very difficult for yourself. One point eight. Make the following changes to the sources added in the document. Okay, so this is something that's been coming up quite a lot. So you need to make sure you know how to edit a source in the document. That doesn't mean the source needs to display some way. That doesn't mean the source needs to be um, already listed as a, a citation, anything. This is literally just manage sources. That's all you need to do go to the manage sources okay what did they say we need to do let's just first have a look add the corporate author bex j to the airports of the world source manage sources airports of the world edit it's a corporate author bex j Okay, next one. Change the type of the understanding airport's source to a report. Manage sources again. Understanding airports, do you see? There's the source. Edit. Changing the type to a report. Okay. And the last question is, Add an automatic bibliography on the last page in the APA format. Okay, so currently my document is set to Chicago. So I need to change it to APA and then insert a bibliography. Now, they didn't penalize if you just insert it like this, but then there's a double heading. So the best way to do it is insert it with this one so that it doesn't provide a double heading. Just to show you what it looks like different, if I actually change it back to Chicago, you'll see the um, uh, years don't have brackets around them and there's some other small changes, but the easiest way to see it is with the years. But there's no way for you to know exactly what the different ones look like. You just need to know to change the style. Okay, and that's it for question one. See you in question two.